Will a false flag asteroid attack be staged to delay the 2020 presidential election? On November 4, 2016, NASA, FEMA, the Department of Energy, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, US Air Force and the California Governor's Office of Emergency Services collaborated in a planning exercise simulating a destructive asteroid impact set for September 20, 2020. The exercise planners envisaged that the asteroid up to 800 feet 250 meters in size would hit somewhere along a narrow band across Southern California or just off the Pacific coast. Here's what the NASA JPL news release had to say about the simulated asteroid impact hypothesized to take place in three weeks time. Quote, the exercise simulated a possible impact four years from now a fictitious asteroid imagined to have been discovered this fall with a 2% probability of impact with Earth on September 20, 2020. The simulated asteroid was initially estimated to be between 300 and 800 feet, 100 and 250 meters in size, with a possibility of making impact anywhere along a long swath of Earth including a narrow band of area that crossed the entire United States. In the fictitious scenario, observers continued to track the asteroid for three months using ground-based telescope observations and the probability of impact climbed to 66%. Then the next observations had to wait until four months later due to the asteroid's position relative to the Sun. Once observations could resume in May of 2017, the impact probability jumped to 100%. By November of 2017, it was simulated that the predicted impact would occur somewhere in a narrow band across the Southern California or just off the coast in the Pacific Ocean." End quote. This is not the first or only simulated asteroid impact exercise designed by scientists and government agencies. A more recent asteroid impact exercise occurred in 2019 and hypothesized an asteroid impact for New York City on April 29, 2027. An asteroid similar in size to that envisaged earlier back in November 2016 would hit with a destructive force ranging from 100 to 800 megatons. It's worth noting that the largest hydrogen bomb test in history, the 1961 Tsar bomber, had a destructive force of 50 megatons. Coincidentally, Russia just released classified footage of the Tsar bomber showing its destructive effects in the remote Arctic region of Novaya Zemlya. Clearly, if an asteroid were to hit the continental US or just off the Pacific coast with anywhere near an 800 megaton destructive yield, an entire region would be devastated with an extremely high death toll. What gives the September 20, 2020 asteroid impact simulation great relevance today is not the approaching target date for a hypothetical asteroid impact, but a series of worrying scientific and political developments. These developments firmly point to a major false flag attack that is about to be unleashed by the deep state in a last ditch effort to prevent the 2020 presidential election from occurring. In evaluating the possibility that an asteroid impact is about to be staged in real life for a political agenda, it's worth pointing out that Dr. Werner von Braun, former head of NASA's Marshall Flight Center, was the first to reveal that a false flag asteroid attack would one day be staged by the deep state. In 1974, he confided in Carol Rosen, a former executive to Fairchild Industries about a sequence of false flag events that would be orchestrated by the deep state in order to promote their agenda for the weaponization of space. Von Braun said that an asteroid attack would be orchestrated once the deep state had exhausted earlier contrived threats posed in turn by the Russians, 
terrorists and nations of concern. When such threats no longer carried the political justification for massive military spending, a new scenario would be thrust upon the American public in order to maintain and even increase military spending further. This would ultimately lead to the weaponization of space, according to von Braun. What makes von Braun's warning particularly important given the September 20 date set in the 2016 asteroid impact exercise is the closing of over 100 of the Earth's largest observatories due to the COVID-19 crisis. There appears to be no real health justification for such unprecedented closures. After all, nighttime telescopes are largely automated involving relatively few astronomers. What makes this situation even more remarkable is the recent accidental damage to the Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico. On August 11, 2020, a large cable snapped, making the observatory unusable for the foreseeable future. This means that at this critical time, when asteroids are regularly being reported to be just missing the Earth, there are currently very few astronomers observing the night sky. According to Stephen Jonowick of the McDonald Observatory in Texas, quote, If everybody in the world stops observing, then we have a gap in our data that you can't recover. This will be a period that we in the astronomy community have no data on whatever. End quote. Jonowick's comment is critical since it confirms that there is no independent astronomical data on what is currently happening in space. What makes this even more telling is that in the 2016 Asteroid Impact Exercise set for September 2020, observatories played the key role in identifying and tracking the asteroid before its destructive impact. Here's what Shepard Ambulus from IntelliHub had to say about the recent closing of observatories. Quote, Defying all logic, a number of telescopes and observatories around the world remain closed amid the coronavirus pandemic, while the impact risk of near-Earth earthbound objects remains at an all-time high. Over 100 telescopes have been reported to have been shut down in a move that virtually makes no sense, and now one of the world's largest radio telescopes, named the Arecibo Observatory, has been rendered inoperable after sustaining damage after cable unexpectedly snapped, creating about a 100 foot long gash in the dish itself, furthering fueling the problem. To make matters worse, the Puerto Rico based telescope was tracking a near Earth object when it went offline. With all, there has never been a more perfect time for an asteroid to strike, and the Department of Defense, the White House, and other agencies are aware. End quote. With the closure of so many observatories, if the deep state was planning to stage a false flag asteroid attack, this would be the perfect time for it. There would be relatively few professional astronomers with data that could refute the narrative put out by government agencies and mainstream news sources if a false flag event were to occur. For example, if covert space weapons, such as Rods of God, were used to simulate an asteroid strike, there would be few astronomers with data to challenge a contrived official narrative orchestrated by the Deep State using their worldwide media assets. Why now? One powerful reason is the Deep State's assessment through internal polling that Donald Trump is going to easily win the 2020 presidential election. This is supported by multiple polls showing that Trump is making major inroads among independent and minority voters with his law and order approach. Joe Biden is also showing no real desire to get out to meet with voters, seriously tackle Trump head on, and there are even calls now for him to abandon the debates. Even impartial left-leaning observers such as Dr. Jonathan Turley, a Georgetown University professor, are mystified by the Democratic Party's lack of desire to condemn the riots and violence that has affected major urban areas and led to social chaos. 
This is leading to a massive swing to Trump as the law and order president. It's as though Democratic leaders have abandoned any hope of winning the election and are promoting widespread social chaos in the hope of pinning the blame on Trump in a desperate Hail Mary move. What the above circumstantial evidence suggests is that rather than have Trump win another election, the deep state is instead about to unleash a major false flag operation to prevent the 2020 election from occurring. This would create even more chaos since the US Constitution has no provision for President Trump remaining in office beyond January 20, 2021. This would also impact the House of Representatives and one third of senators who are facing re-election on November 3rd and whose terms expire on January 3rd, 2021. This is how Alan Dershowitz, a retired Harvard University professor who has deep state ties through his close association with the convicted pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, frames the issue. Quote, what does the Constitution provide in the event that an emergency precludes an election before the end of a term of the President? We begin, of course, with the words of the Constitution. The 20th Amendment says, The terms of the President and Vice President shall end at noon on January 20. Nothing could seem clearer. But if there is no election, there is no President-elect nor Vice President-elect. Congress does provide for a line of succession to the White House if by reason of death, resignation, removal from office, inability or failure to qualify, there is neither a president nor a vice president. However, even if Congress has the authority to fill this gap in the Constitution, it is unclear that it has done so with the existing law because the line of succession begins with the House Speaker. But there would be no House Speaker if there were no election, because there would be no House all of whose members would be up for election in November. The terms of all members of the House would end as stated in the Constitution on January 3rd. There would, however, be a Senate with the majority of its members not up for election in November and therefore still serving their terms. This is important as the next in line would be the President Pro Tempore of the Senate, which is Charles Grassley. However, if there were no election, there may be a Democratic majority among the remaining Senators not up for re-election unless sitting governors or state legislatures were allowed to fill vacant seats, which is another issue. Dershowitz is pointing out that without an election, it would be up to the rump of the US Senate to select the next US President. The two-thirds of the Senators that would still be serving until their terms ended either on January 3rd, 2023 or 2025 would make the necessary choices. Out of the 65 sitting U.S. Senators who are not up for re-election in 2020, 33 are Democrats, 30 are Republicans, and 2 are Independents, Bernie Sanders and Angus King. Both Sanders and King caucus with the Democrats. This means that in the scenario of an abandoned 2020 presidential election, after January 3rd, the current majority leader Mitch McConnell and President Pro Tempore Chuck Grassley would be replaced by Democrats, who would now be the majority party with a voting advantage of 35 to 30. The new President Pro Tempore of the US Senate would be either Chuck Schumer, current Senate majority leader, or the replacement to the current Democratic whip, since Richard Durbin is among those who would lose his current position. Senate Minority Whip. Being fourth in the presidential line of succession after the positions of President, Vice President and House Majority Leader positions all become vacant on January 3rd and 20, 2021, Schumer or Durbin's replacement would become the new President. New federal elections would then be scheduled according to the timetable and agenda of the now Democratic controlled Senate. What strengthens such an alarming scenario which would nullify President Trump's re-election campaign is Nancy Pelosi's recent strange claims about the presidential chain of succession and continuity of government, which were made in a recent interview on MSNBC. Quote, whether he, Donald Trump, knows it or not, he will be leaving. Just because he might not want to move out of the White House doesn't mean we won't have an inauguration ceremony to inaugurate a duly elected President of the United States. 
Pelosi's statements were made after she had attended last month's continuity of government meeting in which the Pentagon had revealed to top officials in the chain of succession to the presidency that there is a chance for a potential disaster to strike before the elections which would cripple the US and other countries. End quote. Pelosi appears to be alluding to some continuity of government crisis that leads to Trump's removal from office and the installation of a duly elected president after some natural disaster. In sum, Von Braun's warning of a future false flag asteroid impact, the closure of over 100 major observatories, swarms of recent asteroid near misses, the self-defeating electoral strategy of the Democratic Party in encouraging riots and social chaos, Joe Biden's bizarre absence from serious politicking, Nancy Pelosi's strange reference to continuity of government and presidential succession rules, and finally, Alan Dershowitz's description of how the abandonment of the 2020 election would force Trump to leave office on January 20, 2021, all point to a deep state plan to prevent Trump from being re-elected. A contrived asteroid strike on the US using covertly deployed space weapons controlled by the deep state would lead to catastrophic destruction and almost certainly the abandonment of the November 3rd federal elections. The deep state strategy would then be to run out the clock so that on January 20, Trump's position as president is vacated as required by the constitution. There would also no longer be a serving House of Representatives and all that would be left is a rump US Senate that would be controlled by the Democratic Party. Could such a diabolical plan actually succeed in both deceiving the American public through a false flag asteroid attack and preventing President Trump's all but inevitable re-election? Currently, the US Space Force is in the process of integrating all space assets from the different military services in a comprehensive way that would prevent such a false flag event from occurring. Historically, the deep state has used assets from the US military, intelligence community, and major aerospace corporations for false flag attacks such as the September 11, 2001 terrorist attack and the failed January 13, 2018 Hawaii ballistic missile attack. Space Force will eventually end that practice as far as military space assets are concerned. Space Force's rapid integration process is something that greatly worries the deep state, as I will explain in my upcoming September 26 webinar, Why Space Force Terrifies the Deep State and Rogue Secret Space Programs. However, the deep state still has significant space assets from the US intelligence community, major aerospace corporations, and even foreign powers, China, that it could co-opt for a false flag asteroid impact event. Space Force and White Hats in the US military industrial complex will have to closely monitor these rogue space assets to ensure they would not be co-opted into such a false flag event. There is compelling circumstantial evidence pointing to a deep state plan to launch a false flag asteroid attack or some other contrived natural disaster sometime between September 20 and the November 3rd, 2020 federal elections. However, widespread public awareness of such a diabolical plan and proactive intervention by Space Force or White Hats can prevent such a plan from being successful. This has been Dr. Michael Sala with exopolitics.org. For references and sources I cite in this article, please visit my website to see the links. And don't forget to subscribe to my email list so you get the latest updates. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel and aloha.